welcome once again to Scorpion Scar Reviews. Today I'm coming to you from Florida's Palm Coast at Victor Esposito's place. He uh, graciously uh, had us over for a, uh, a late lunch and uh, providing some cigars and uh, some nice uh, single malt scotch, a Glen Moray, 10 year old. So we'll be pairing that with a Perdomo Habano Sun Grown. Uh, Victor, tell us a little bit about the cigar. Yeah, well, the cigar is a uh, Nicaraguan puro, which of course it means that the uh, wrapper and the uh, binder and the uh, filler are all from Nicaragua. And uh, they're aged in bourbon barrel for 10 years to give it that flavor and that substance and that uh, real unique taste. And so we're going to go ahead and try the cigar and uh, we'll see uh, how it goes. Right, and, and where did you get these from? I got these cigars from uh, a place called uh, Mike's Cigars in uh, Daytona. Oh, okay, okay. Fine. So, uh, it's a kind of a light, like a light milk chocolate color. Yes, yes, yes. Nice, nice firm pack. A little, yeah. little, little bit of not sponge, but it's got that hard chewiness. Just the right amount to get to it. Right, it's got a good pack to it. Yeah, nice right. looking artwork on the label as well. It, it does. It does really have a beautiful right. label. Right, and it's got a foot. Oh, right, and the foot band also, um, which I like is that that tells you that it's sun grown. Um, so yeah, it's kind of nice. Oh, the smell is wonderful. It's got cedar and oh, cocoa and mm -hmm. oh, I don't know what else, but it's really delicious smell. Yeah. Now I'm noticing on here is you have a little bit of damage on your cigar. You're, you're already split. Yeah, you see I, see, I see. I see that a little bit on the side here. Now, just because the wrapper is split like that. Doesn't necessarily mean you have draw problems. I've no. had cigars where the binder held it just fine. Yeah. Right. But I've also seen cigars with much less damage, uh, at least on the outward appearance, that it would, would draw properly. Right. It was, if you're just sucking air through that, you don't get any smoke coming through. Right. Right. So we just have to see what happens. Um, the feel, there's a, a very slight waxiness to it. Yes. Yeah. A little oil, a nice yeah. oil really. Yeah, just nice a little, little oil. Right. And it has almost, there's almost like a golden undertone to the wrapper. Right. Like a right. Bronze. I call it browns when I see that golden undertone, but mm -hmm. some veins, but they're small. Yeah, yeah invisible seams. I yeah, I mean, I don't, seams. yeah, and I can see the seam. I mean, as hard as I look, I am not seeing a seam on this anywhere. Yeah. So, uh, so far the construction looks it looks gorgeous. And by the way, this is actually the new version of the Perdomo Habano uh, Sun Grove. Okay. Okay. They had uh, previously, uh, a year ago or so, they had the old version, which people say it was much, much better. The now, older one. Yes, okay. the older one. So now it's up to us to kind of judge for ourselves, uh, right. what we like about this at all. There's a little something different on the foot. I'm going to tell you what I smell. And then you tell me what you smell. Honestly, I'm smelling some bourbon on the foot. Which is strange, because this is, oh, but didn't you say this is a bourbon barrel age? Yes, right. it is. So, right here. with that, that yeah. so I'm actually, there is a very subtle bourbon-esque quality on the foot. I didn't get it on the wrapper, but I'm definitely getting it on the foot. Yes, I do too. And more than yes, that, definitely. More than that chocolate, more like a uh, almost like a chocolate fudge simple kind of chocolate. Mm -hmm. And it's got a little barnyard smell. Like yes, a little bit, very subtle. Very subtle, yes. Okay, but yeah, there's a lot going on already. Yeah, yeah. I agree. All right, so should we go ahead and uh, yeah, well, we'll cut it and we'll do a pre-light draw. See what kind of right, right. Uh, flavors we're getting. 
I don't take too much off the head. Right. You can always cut more. Right. You can't put any back. Right. Exactly. Now, the draw is very loose. Oh, but not overly loose. No. It's, it's a little looser than I'm, I typically like, but it's still within my yes. range. Yes, me too. I took the labels off because I'm a collector of cigar labels. And I, I'm afraid that sometimes I forget and I smoke right through the label. Oh, I'm and, right. I, and, I, up, yeah. and I don't want to, I don't want to smoke a cigar with a label on it. So I took the labels off. Now the pre light draw, I'm getting some, some leather. And I don't know if it's just because we're here on the coast. But I'm definitely getting like a sea air quality. Yes, I do too. As a matter of fact, low leather, some cream. Yeah, some cream. cream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the only reason that I'm not necessarily attributing that sea air quality to it is because my hotel is on the coast, right on the beach, right. and I hadn't gotten any sea air out of either of the scars I've smoked since I've been here. Right. This is the first one here. I've had other scars in the past, up where I live, right off the bat, the first thing I know is, oh, that's like sea air. Um, and I don't live in the country. Right. But I'm yeah, getting I some understand. sea air out of this. I so, understand. from the saltiness, from the seaweed in there, um, yeah, it just, it's very, very beachy. Yes. Yes, I must agree. I uh, mm -hmm. paired the cigar with a... Uh, Glen Murray single malt Scotch whiskey, 10 years old. So I never had this before, but I will try it and see how it pairs with this fine cigar. All right, this is a 43% alcohol by volume. So being here in Florida and we're, we're out in a garage, there's no air conditioning out here. It's not real hot, but uh, just to uh, make it a little more comfortable, a little more palatable, we have put uh, two ice cubes, right? Yes. And uh, and while these aren't proper whiskey tasting glasses, uh, this was probably pretty close. The closest thing you had to what you would normally sample a new a new whiskey or scotch. Yeah, actually, so this is, actually, these are cognac. Yeah, these are cognac glasses. glasses. Right, exactly, and that's fine um, because especially since this is this review is more about the cigar than. Then Scotch. If it was specifically a Scotch review, I'd say, hey, we've got to have the right tasting glasses to bring out the proper nose, you know, to the shape and everything. But this is just fine. So, I'm going to do the ice cubes to help cool it down, to help cool us down. So, anyway, I'm about ready to light it. Nice, pretty light draw. Yeah. And uh, I try to light my cigar the proper way, which you keep the flame away from the head of the cigar, but you want to be consistent and try to light the whole head equally and nice and even as you possibly can. A little trick I do, Victor, is as you're rotating it, if you watch the outer edge, I try to get the outer edge to where there's like a ring all the way around it. Yes, that's what I do. Okay. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And then you can slowly go right towards the center of the cigar from there. Rotating it constantly. Now, of course, the only downside is these lighters will beat us quickly. I'm starting to get uncomfortable the whole thing. So I'm going to have to speed things up a little bit here. Yeah, that's going to In the first draw, got a long, pretty long finish. It was very nice. Hmm. There's some spice right off the bat. Some pepper. Right. I just read for a and then and I can feel, though I can taste the spices, leather, and I also detect, detect a bit of uh, maybe uh, grapefruit. Or okay, some 
something just citrusy or citrusy. sour. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yes. And uh, I kind of like that. But it's a very good, good smoke so far. Yeah, I'm not getting any of the citrus yet myself. Yeah. I'm definitely getting some spice. Maybe um, almost a little bit of mineral in there, too. Yes, yes. All right, well, we'll continue smoking, and uh, we'll come back somewhere in the first third and uh, see how the cigar progresses from there. We'll see you then. All right, so here we are. We're well into the first third. Uh, what have you been picking up over the last few I'm years? telling you, I've enjoyed the cigar from the start. I detected citrusy, citrusy taste. Um, a little chocolate, leather, some cream, um, and also maybe a little cocoa. A little cocoa, uh, like real good cigar. I have to admit that this is a good cigar. Now I've known EEM for uh, approximately three, three years maybe, I met him online. He's one of the best cigar reviewer I ever met. And when he says that he tastes this and he tastes that in a cigar, you better believe it, it's the truth. Because I do the same thing. I do what he says and I taste the same things. And it's a great cigar and he smokes great cigars. So with that said, I leave it up to you. <laughs> Well, I'm getting, I, I still haven't really picked up the citrus. Um, and it's funny because sometimes you can, you can nose a cigar and get a pre light draw and you can taste this or that or the other. Yes. But when you smoke it, sometimes you don't get any of those. You don't get them out, just out. But sometimes you get everything that you've got on the nose when you're smoking it. Now, for me, I got on the nose and the pre light draw, I got things like the leather, the bread dough, a little bit of the cocoa. Yeah. And that, I'm not getting any of that smoking the cigar. However, what I am getting, um, I'm getting some mineral, some earth, um, basic spicy type characters, yes. characteristics. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not getting the same things you're getting. Uh, I've been I've been kind of looking for that citrus. That I'm I'm not getting that, but it doesn't mean you won't. I, so I, I mean, everybody's totally different. Sometimes I'll, I'll sit and I'll smoke a cigar with somebody, and and then I'll mention something. And, oh yeah, no, I think what I'm getting that, and then. You know, the next guy, I said, ah, I'm not getting that at all. You may get it at a different point in the cigar than I get, and yeah. vice versa. So we may get down to the, about the halfway point, and all of a sudden, I may get like, oh, there's the citrus you were talking about. Uh -huh. Now I'm getting it. But yeah, so um, yeah, I've got some other people that I've, I've done some videos with in the past. And uh, yeah, because there'll be people that, yeah, you seem like you're a lot more knowledgeable about the cigars than what the initial impression I'd gotten from you when we you know, chatted back and forth. Right, right. You know, um, so you're picking up a lot of good things that um, a lot of people that have been smoking for 20, 30, 40 years, and they're like, yeah, I don't know, I, I like it, but they don't know why. You know why. You know what you're tasting, and you know what you like about the cigars. You can take, even this, this cigar, for example, you may say, well, I like this, this, and this, but it's got this other thing that I don't really like, but because it's got the other stuff, I can, you know, right, I right, can overlook right. that. Not that it's necessarily a flaw, it's maybe not a flavor that's to your like. Uh, some people don't like leather. Some people, I, I've had some people say, barn air. Why would you smoke something that tastes like cow I've never had, I've never tasted that in a cigar. Well, uh, you okay. know, he yeah, unusually, I find that when I smoke a cigar and I kind of smell a little bit and I can detect a barnyard smell, which you just described, it usually turns out to be a good cigar. Yeah, yeah. Because, because tobacco's growing on a farm. Right. Doesn't mean they got cows running around right. or chickens running around. Right. I don't know what type of natural fertilizer uh, you know, one tobacco farmer from another tobacco farmer uses on that particular um, strain of, 
tobacco. Right. But everything that goes into the soil influences the taste on the leaf. It's, it's like wine with terroir. Um, the Champagne region, that's where they got the name Champagne. It comes from the Champagne region of France. France, right. right. Um, cognac comes from a very small segment in France along the river. And it's just this very small area. And it's not one farmer that's, you know, it's not one big conglomerate that makes cognac. There's probably 30 different farmers with five acres of grapes. And two acres of that may be what, you know, I can use two acres from you, I'm going to use a half an acre from you, I'm going to use three acres from you, and right. that's going to be right. how you make right. cognac out of it. Exactly. So you know, it's terroir. It, you get the same thing with tobacco. It's, it, you're picking up everything from the soil, which is also influenced by the climate. Um, you're going to get the minerals that are there based on soil composition. If, if it's in a volcanic region, which most of the islands in the Caribbean are, they have a volcanic soil. Most of the islands are volcanoes. Which is a, probably the best soil to work the back of it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but then you have some that have sunshine all year round, then you right. have some that have cloud cover year round with very little sun. Right, right. So that affects the leaves differently. Um, so that's why they'll, they'll take a blend and there may be one blend that doesn't use any from uh, the Dominican Republic, for example. Right. Uh, they don't like how the sun affects it for that particular blend. Yeah. So it's not like you can just say, well, you know, I'm going to get you know uh, two acres from you and five acres from you and six acres from you, because then you wouldn't get. Sometimes they don't blend well together. So you know, like you wouldn't you wouldn't mix Tabasco and cream cheese. Well, right. I guess you could, but I mean, you know, I wouldn't think it would you know, produce a really good flavor. Um, other than maybe in a salsa, mm -hmm. where you put some green <laughs> and mango salsa, oh, yeah, it's got yeah, cream yeah. cheese in it, yeah, right. and it's got the salsa, and I, yeah, and a little bit of spice because you got different peppers and stuff. So yeah, in that way you could, but other than that, you wouldn't take a, a, a brick of cream cheese and blend in Tabasco sauce and spread that on your bagel. I wouldn't no. think. No, no, I wouldn't think. Yeah, so, yeah. But it's going to be the same thing with tobacco leaves. There's going to be certain tobacco leaves that blend better with other tobacco leaves than you know this other one. Right. So, exactly. right. So, um, but as far as uh, the different flavors that you're getting, it's all coming from one the tobacco type, two the soil composition, three the amount of sun, four the, the general climate. Does it get a lot of rain? Right. Now most of the Caribbean islands were, you know, almost all the tobacco was grown other than you know, your Connecticut, your Pennsylvania, your Kentucky. Uh, for the most part, it all comes from the Caribbean. So while they're going to be similar, some islands have a lot more cloud cover than other islands. Uh, so that all influences what you're going to take. So, and uh, for some people out there, the straight-out smokers, that you might want to know what sun grown uh, exactly means is that when they grow tobacco, either in uh, Honduras or uh, Nicaragua, or they, have, they don't cover their plants with a net, per se, over the plants to block the sun. To block right. the sun. So therefore they're exposed to the sun. Dark early. Right. Until so they're ready to be harvested. Right. And they become sun grown, which adds a little bit more character to the cigar. A, yeah, a different kind of character. Right. Right. Yeah. Each cigar has its own character. Each tobacco leaf has its own character. So if you add more sun or less sun, it's going to change that character. Right, right. exactly. Right. And like people, cigar leaves, tobacco leaves, will tan right. in the sun. They'll become dark. You stood out in the sun all day, every day, you're going to get really dark. If you stood in the shade all the time, you're not going to be so dark. Just, just ask that those, those cannibals, do, do they prefer sun-grown people or shade-grown people? <laughs> Good point. There you go.
Good point. All right, so uh, we're well into the first third here. And uh, for me, the smoke is starting to become dry. It was a little bit sweeter in the beginning. It had a little bit more moisture on it, but now as I'm smoking, it's, I'm finding myself wanting more and more to drink to help compensate for the dryness of the, of the smoke. Um, I think I'll probably get a glass of water on the next break. Yeah, well, with me, uh, right now, uh, I have to agree with Ian, but I also, besides the citrusy uh, hint to it, I can get a little touch of nut, dry nut. Yes, yeah. And uh, I kind of like that. So uh, we'll be back in a minute with uh, more uh, information on this beautiful stick. And I love it. And a couple of glasses of water. And a couple of glasses of water, of course. <laughs> See you in a bit. All right, so uh, we've both removed our, our bands. Now you removed yours right from the beginning. I removed mine just a moment ago. Um, and you had a split in yours right, right off the bat. Right, but the binder is holding. Right. Now, mine, even before I removed the band, mine started to come unravel right here. Um, and then under the band, it's, it's even more so. Um, and you had asked what yes. causes that. Yeah. Um, and I've said this on some of my other videos. Uh, people have asked, uh, like on some of my cigar one-on-one -on -one videos, they say, well, why does mine come apart? What causes it? All kinds of things. Um, as I had mentioned to you, for one, when they shipped them over from the Dominican, Nicaragua, Honduras, you know, wherever, yeah. you know, they put them in these big containers. And they're big, it's, it's like a big oven, they're these big metal containers, the sun's beating down on them as they're coming across, and uh, they're just heating up and they're cooking. They're very hard on the cigar. And bouncing back on the back. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, so you have that, and then you have where you know, once they make it to the warehouse here in the United States, you have the distributors here. You, know, you don't know how well they're handling the cigars. Some of them don't care, it's just a job. You know, it's like you see where some people complain, they'll take a video of the UPS guy throwing the box halfway across the yard and land on the porch. Right. It's a box full of cigars. Well, there's a good chance that half those cigars are gonna crack as soon as you find them. Uh, rough handling. Depends on the cigar leaf. This is a very thin, it's a very fragile leaf. Right. Um, and moisture it, content, as it's heating up when you're smoking it, the, the, the moisture content within the cigar, if it's stored at 70% relative humidity, and as you're smoking it, and it's heating up, it's expanding the moisture, causing cigarettes. Right. right. So, yeah, there's all kinds of things that yeah. can cause that. Um, and with a, a thinner, more fragile leaf, you're going to see that more so than you would on, for example, a Connecticut, uh, Connecticut broadleaf or Pennsylvania broadleaf, which is a thicker, thicker, right, a more robust, right. much yeah. sturdier leaf. Um, so, yeah, they can handle the abuse a little bit better than a, a more fragile. Leaf. Yeah. Good. I just uh, ashed my cigar a few minutes ago. It, it was about an inch. Yeah, you got a good inch and a quarter or something. Yeah, and. Uh, it's smoking well. Again, I'm getting the same flavors. Not as pronounced as at the beginning. I lost that citrusy uh, touch, but I'm getting a lot of nut, like a toasted nut and a little bit of coffee, cocoa, uh, but it's burning cool, and that's one thing I like about a cigar, because when it gets too hot, uh, then it ruins the uh, the smoking session. However, I enjoy the cigar very much. The Perdomo uh, Habano bourbon barrel aged for 10 months. Great cigar, and I recommend it to anybody. Maybe not the beginner so much, but okay, what is that? What's the price point on it? Per cigar. This is about, uh, I would say about eight, eight and a half of a cigar. Okay, about eight and a half of a cigar. Yeah. So this is not outrageous. No. So for a new cigar smoker to see something this size at eight and a half bucks, that's not outrageous. If you saw, you know, like a new cigar smoker, they'd be a little intimidated by a twenty or thirty dollars. Oh yeah, of course. Or fifteen dollars. Yes. Hey, I'm intimidated by a thirty dollars cigar. Uh, but yeah, eight and a half bucks. 
No, that's, that's not too bad. It's, it's on the higher end of my comfort level. Yeah, sure. So I'm not, I, I typically wouldn't buy eight or nine dollars a cigar every day. Right. But uh, yeah, well, from time to time, sure, no problem. Um, now what I'm starting to pick up from this is I'm getting a little bit of dry cedar, the spice of the dry cedar, with a cinnamon finish. A long finish of cinnamon. You know those cinnamon disc candies? I leave that kind of cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting that. Not sweet, not the sweetness, but the cinnamon itself. A little bit hot, um, spicy hot, and very cinnamony. And it, it's, it's lingering. It's still there right now. It's still there. And, I, uh, and like I said, I, I'm getting a, uh, a lot of, like a nut, not a burnt nut, but a, a toasted, toasted nut, nut, toasted nut flavor. Uh, I lost the citrus. But I still get a little bit of leather, and uh, smoking well so far. Burn, I had to touch it up a few times because uh, it was burning on one side a little bit too much. So I touched that up, but it evened out. So I'm still happy with it. Back to you, Ian. All right. Well, as I mentioned, yeah, I'm, I'm really starting to come apart here pretty good. Yeah, I there's see several that. splits and where it's cracked and starting to unravel, and really starting to become a bit of a problem. Um, I've tried moistening it and tried to uh, let it back down, but it's yeah. not. The binder's holding. Um, it's still smoking just fine. It's just this this wrapper is it's annoying. It's all get up. Oh yeah, 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 it is. Um, it does. But you know, it's not really affecting the flavor. Just uh, you know, sometimes you get to a point and say, "Well, I'm just going to pull that little piece off." Because I'm tired of playing with it. Sticks to your lip. You pull the cigar away, and more of it unravels. Yeah, stuff to your right. Lip, you know. So, but uh, yeah, the flavor profile uh, it's definitely changed. Like I said, now I'm getting um, some dry cedar and that cinnamon on the finish. Um, and long, and it's in, yeah, yeah, very long finish of cinnamon. And it's actually it, it's really enhanced by the alcohol oh, yeah. of, of the scotch. Um, and, and you'll get that a lot where anything peppery, spicy, or whatever, if you're drinking a scotch, um, you, that will enhance that. It'll carry it through you further. Whereas, say, a bourbon is a little sweeter, you'll get a different reaction. Because yeah. what you drink will yeah. influence your, your cigar, the flavors that you're getting from the cigar. Um, you know, I, I had one guy tell me once, well, you know, you're, you're drinking whiskey with your cigar. You're, you're not getting, you know, a good impression of, of what you're. You know, that's not really what you're going to taste. Point is, your chances are you're going to drink something with a cigar, whether it's a soda, a glass of water, a cup of coffee, a scotch, uh, some kind of fruity tropical drink, whatever. Chances are, 90% of the time, people are going to drink something. Even a glass of water will influence yes. in some way. It's neutral. Yes. It's neutral. But it's still going to influence your smoking experience. For example, if it's dry, you're going to want that water. So now it's not quite as dry. That's part of the smoking experience. Exactly. I find, uh, I find that the uh, two best, uh, I would say, beverages, that I enjoy with a cigar is actually a cup of coffee in the morning. I love to smoke a cigar, whether it's mild or strong, with a good cup of coffee in the morning. And I also find out, found out that a glass of ginger ale goes good with a good cigar. With me, my yeah. personal taste. Now some people actually hate ginger because they don't like ginger. Yeah, they don't like that, that, that the character that ginger parts on that. I love ginger. My, my wife, she makes candy ginger. Oh, I love ginger myself. Now I don't, I don't like the store bought fake crap that's chewy like gum and it's just, yeah no no, no 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 it's real. She buys the ginger root. She she bakes she cuts it up she bakes it she puts the sugar on it makes it get caramelizes the sugar and there's a fine line between caramelizing the sugar and overcooking. Yeah, so yeah, I love ginger. So yeah. Um, spicy. Kind 
kind of hot spicy. Yeah. yeah. And then that caramely sweetness helps to offset the spice and good balance. But yeah, some people just don't want anything to do with ginger. I've talked to people, oh, I don't even like ginger ale. I don't like ginger soda. <laughs> you're drinking soda constantly, you don't like ginger ale. Okay, some people just don't like ginger ale. Yeah. Well, like I said before, ginger ale is uh, it's a good pair with my cigar. When I smoke it in, in the morning or in the afternoon, but in the morning I prefer a cup of coffee. A nice strong cup of coffee with a nice mild or full body cigar. I just love it. That yeah. coffee does something yes. to my cigar mm -hmm. that really gets my attention. As far as coffee, do you have um, a specific kind of coffee that you like? You like certain type of beans? Certain well, I, I, I prefer the uh, Seattle's Best coffee. Okay, Seattle's Best, yeah. Uh, it's a wonderful coffee. Uh, I usually send the wife for it because you can't find it around here anywhere. But uh, that's my preference, and uh, I, I enjoy a cigar with uh, a good cup of Seattle best. What about espresso? You, you mentioned earlier that that's, you're expecting to drink Yes, espresso. well, espresso, uh, I, I like espresso. I love espresso just like Ian does. But I don't drink as much espresso as I would like to. Uh, not because I don't have the capability of having it, it's just that I don't feel like going through the motions of right. making espresso coffee. So yeah. I just yeah, it takes some time. Yeah, you know. yeah. And there's an art to it. Yeah, right, yeah. there is. Well, that's what I like about my barista machine. There's really no art to it. They, you know, the, the Starbucks pods of, of the espresso, I like the blend of coffee that they use. I like the amount of roast that they get to it. And so I'll do my double shot of espresso every morning. And there's virtually no mess. It's, you get the pod, drop it into the machine, fills up your cup, and the pod drops through into a little bucket underneath. And once in a while you get a little bucket out. So there's, there's no mess, there's no art to it. You don't have to say, oh, I didn't I pack it too tight or pack it too loose. Or, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, there's all kinds of yeah, because I've had the expensive machines where it was all you. You know, if you didn't do something right, you didn't get a good cup. You know, so it's it's very consistent. It's a good well, cup of coffee every time. Yes, I, I had one of those manual, old-fashioned espresso coffee maker, and uh, it is a pain in the neck when uh, you want to try to get some espresso uh, in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening, but. I do love coffee, I, again, I'm going to repeat myself, but I do love coffee in the morning with a cigar. That just does something to me that makes me want to smoke the cigar, and I really, really enjoy the flavors, the, the taste. There's something about it. What about iced coffee? Do you drink iced coffee? Uh, yes, I do. I'm not too crazy about it. Um, I will drink it uh, occasionally. I get it from uh, Dunkin' Donut uh, occasionally, but uh, I don't make a habit of it. Let me give you a little tip. Something I recently started doing, I love it. I get my iced coffee, and then I'll brew a, a fresh out of espresso right on top. Oh, wow. Now your socks on. Yeah, next time you, you go to Dutch Stones or wherever, get your iced coffee, bring it home, brew yourself a shot of espresso right on top. Good stuff. Man, uh, you know, I've seen uh, people, particularly the Italian culture, they, they love espresso. And uh, what they do is uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the making of it is they make the espresso, then they put some kind of cream on it, and it foams. And it foams right over the cup. And it's okay. delicious. I don't know what okay. it is. That's, that's, I don't that's know the what they pressure. Call it. That's the pressure. That's the, they call it the creme. Oh, okay. When, when you brew the espresso, like your machine, um, it's not really pressurized. Right. It's, it's, it's basically a little percolate. Right. Right. 
So when you get an espresso maker uh, that has the, the various bars of pressure, the higher the pressure, um, and you know, different different machines will list the different pressure based on uh, based on bars of pressure. Yeah. But the higher the bar of pressure, that's the more force that the water is pushed through the grounds. Right. And that will create a foam. Okay. And yeah, so they look for that. that I don't be wrong though with that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like when you made the espresso after lunch, there was no no cream on the foam. Right. Because it was a percolated espresso as opposed to a pressurized espresso. So not only do you get, you know, you don't get the foam on it, but it has a, a different taste, a different quality to it, a whole different character, whereas the whole cup of espresso the way you make it, it's a little bit creamy. But right. it doesn't have the cream foam on it. Right. It's, it's kind of like beer. When you pour it, it's got a good head on it. Some beers, very little head. Right. It all depends. Now that has nothing to do with the pressure and that kind of thing. That's different. But I mean, as far as a creaminess, um, yours had the kind of creamy throughout, whereas the espresso I make tends to be a little, a little drier, a little more bold because the cream is on top instead of blending through. Um, and you, you only get that if you use a pressurized espresso maker. Um, so I mean it's, you know, it's a really you know, personal preference. Yes, yes, so. of course. Uh, one thing I did find out though, uh, in my experience smoking cigars for many years, I would say about 35 to 40 years, maybe more, uh, I don't particularly like beer with my cigar. No. I really don't. I uh, would rather have a glass of wine, or a ginger ale, or a cup of coffee. But beer does something to my uh, taste buds that does not appreciate the flavors and the taste of the cigar. That's me. I mean, okay. that's only me. Now with that, I was kind of the same way most beers. I was having a hard time finding a beer that went well with cigars. I like very hoppy beer. So there's this local brewery where I, where I live in the mountains of Virginia it's called Chaos Mountain. Mm -hmm. And they make a beer called Mad Hopper. It's a very hoppy beer. There are beers that are much hoppier, but this is a pretty hoppy beer. I think it's 55 IBUs on the uh, okay. scale. Um, but the thing I find about the hoppy beers is while they're bitter, it kind of cleanses the palate at the same time. And I find that a hoppy beer goes very well with probably 95% of the cigars that I smoke. And in the past, I didn't drink different cigars. But once I started drinking the hoppy beer, I find that it helps it helps me to pick out what the cigar has to offer without masking it. Like, like a lot of the beers will mask the cigar. Because it doesn't really coat your mouth with you know, the different flavors. It's, it's that bitterness cleanses the palate. Yeah, I, I well, I'm not particularly a beer drinker. Right. However, I do like wheat beer. Okay. okay. And I buy this German wheat beer occasionally, but I still don't like to pair it with a cigar. It's just that simple. You like the beer, but you don't like it with a cigar. With a cigar. Yeah, yeah well, there's lots of beers that I like. I love the thick, rich coffee stouts, porters, uh, imperial stouts, uh, that kind of thing. They, they tend to be seasonal uh, because they're thick and rich and heavy. Um, so it's hard to find them during the summer because they're more of a cold weather beer. But um, yeah, I'm the same way. They typically don't go real well with cigars. Yeah, sit right. down and drink the beer. The beer itself is like a dessert. And, you know, I love it. Um, but, pair it with a cigar typically it doesn't go real well. It overpowers most cigars. Yes, Even if yes, you get a very does. strong cigar, no, you're right. It's the, the flavors don't don't match well. Have you ever tried the uh, speaking of beers, uh, I know we're smoking cigars, we should be talking about the cigar, but now that we're at the subject of beer, we might as well bring this out too. Did you ever try the Kentucky mud beer? Or no. something along the line of mud. 
Yeah, I think of one that sounds familiar. I think I've heard of it, but I've never had it. It comes in one of those jugs, like uh, the uh, white lightning. Okay. And uh, it's about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a liter or something like that. Okay. It, it, and it's a stout. It, it's really heavy. Uh, tasty, like though. It's tasty, but again. Not, well, is it a seasonal thing? or is it? No, it's, uh, it's uh, yearly. You can buy it at any time, you know. Well, I see uh, your cigar is burning really crazy though. Three times already. Yeah. That's one thing I don't like about a cigar. Yeah, when it starts to go crazy and stuff like that. And that only means a little bit of poor construction, right. I would say. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to try to light this up a little bit. What I would do is I would tap off all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Start You're off right. fresh. Try this. Okay, that should be good enough. We're about the end of the cigar. Yeah, and it's funny because we, we live about the same time, but we've been smoking about the same amount, other than you've had to relight more often than me. Um, I have had to relight a couple times myself, but I'm a bit further in on mine than you are on yours. Um, not sure why that is, maybe because of all the burn issues you're having, it's not burning. Yeah, probably, that probably, kind of thing, probably, so. probably. But you know, that, that does happen. The thing about cigars is they are a handmade product, uh, unless you buy machine made cigars, you know, that's a different story altogether. Yeah, of course. But, um, yeah, so you're going to get variations just like a you know, home cooked meal. You can put the same home cooked meal 10 times and you're going to get 8 or 10 slight variations because your pinch today. I mean, I can see pinch tomorrow. Right. right. Exactly. So, but anyway, um, this video is actually getting kind of long. Yes, it is. And uh, it's definitely heating up outside. It's uh, almost 5.30 in the afternoon. We're uh, kind of at the high point of the heat here in Florida. Yes. And it's getting about 100. Yeah. And, and in this garage, it's definitely yeah. 100 plus. It's getting pretty hot, getting pretty steamy. So. Uh, We'll probably go ahead and end this review here. We'll finish off our cigars. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to get any further changes um, based on uh, just our own, my own experience with my surroundings are affecting how I'm enjoying the cigar. And physically, I'm starting to get uncomfortable because of the heat. So I'm, so I'm not enjoying the cigar as much. So, but uh, let me say this. Overall, in spite of the burn issues that I've had and uh, the heat and humidity that really makes us uncomfortable, I would have to rate the cigar pretty high because it's a real good cigar. Okay, what would you rate? I would rate it uh, probably on 89.5. Yeah, you're pretty spot on with what I would say. I would say I was pushing 90, a good 90 on this, so yeah, real yeah. close. Um, I'm getting a little bit more meatiness in this, and I'm getting subtle hints of that um, citrus. Yeah, the citrus? What, like the, um, the grape, citrus? Yeah, the grapefruit See, citrus. You get the I'm now. just now getting it towards the end. Right. Right. So, uh, we'll end this review here. So, I thank you for once again watching Scorpion Cigar Reviews uh, with my special guest, Victor Esposito at Victor's Place here in Palm Coast, Florida. That was my pleasure with Ian. Uh, Great company, great reviewer. If you haven't seen his reviews, I recommend you to go to scorpioncigar.com and you'll find his reviews and I'm sure you'll enjoy every single one of them. Well, you have to go to the YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Yeah, because yes. um, my web page is now defunct. Okay. Yeah, I lost my, Sorry web, about post. That. I lost yes. my web post back in, I think it was January or February. They they decided they didn't want to have anything to do with cigars and whiskey and adult content. And they wanted it to be kid friendly. So, uh, you know, they, yeah, it is what it is. Well, uh, but, you know, YouTube, uh, that's where I'm posting my reviews. And you can go to Facebook, uh, go to What Am I Smoking? And uh, I post a lot of my reviews there. Um, so uh, go to Facebook, look up What Am I Smoking? And I put some videos on there. Now, um, the way Facebook works it is, in order to actually see my videos, right. if you click play, it'll just be blank. You have to like my page, and then it'll allow you to play the videos.
Yeah. And it's I'm, nothing I've done, it's just yeah. Facebook's. And I, and I guarantee you one thing, you watch his reviews, and I guarantee you, you want to pick up a stick immediately and smoke it. And with that said, goodbye. One, one quick word. Um, I have recently semi-partnered with a, another uh, web reviewer called Three Rings Cigar Reviews, and uh, I send them reviews about once a week, um, and they'll take my write-up and then post it on their page. So uh, yeah, if you want to see some of the write-ups, if you're not really into the Facebook or the YouTube formats, um, Look at three rings cigar reviews .com. Okay, I'll check it out. And uh, they have they have a bunch of stuff on there. It's they have some things other than cigar reviews, but um, yeah, that's basically what they do. And you'll see a lot of my reviews on there. So good, 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 good stuff, good stuff, good review, and good company, good friendship, and good all around. Thanks for watching. See you next. Time. Thank you.